Uh, I just want to welcome our last panelist for this section, Sarah Cunningham from Buffalo Niagara Riverkeeper. So Sarah, here you go. Um, okay, uh, so I am working at Buffalo Niagara Riverkeeper. I am the Public Health and Environmental Justice Education Coordinator. Um, and this project is actually funded by the Environmental Protection Agency. It's a Great Lakes Restoration Initiative grant. And what we're doing under this grant is um, we're actually enhancing fish consumption advisories in the Western New York region. And we're doing education and outreach to communities in this region who fish or subsist on locally caught fish. Um, so I'm gonna, I guess, start off uh, just talking a little bit more about how we're exposed in this region. And this has already been covered, um, so I'll make it kind of brief. Um, so the Buffalo and Niagara Rivers and pretty much all of the waterways in this area have been impaired by more than a century of heavy, heavy industrial um, pollution. Um, a lot of those chemicals were mentioned earlier, PCBs, um, PAHs, industrial organic chemicals, heavy metals like mercury, um, are polluting our waterways today, even though a lot of them have been banned uh, you know, decades ago. Um, also, already mentioned was the bacteria and um, germs that are polluting our waterways from the CSOs. Um, so if you swim or recreate in this water, um, or you know, drink this water, this can be a, a threat to public health. However, fish consumption really represents the greatest risk to public health. Um, and this is, Diana mentioned this a little bit, um, um, so when we have polluted waterways, uh, this pretty much equals pollution in our fish. Um, we have a lot of different sources of contaminants, some of them are shown here. And Diana was mentioning how um, contaminants biomagnify. So they move up the food chain as fish eat other fish. Um, and what this means is that concentrations in fish can actually be a million times, more than a million times greater than the concentrations that you see in the water column itself. Um, so, you know, if you are swimming in the water and you drink some of this water, that's not really gonna be a threat as far as something like PCBs are concerned. However, if you eat a fish, especially a very large fish, um, the amount of PCBs that you might be sort of being exposed to are much greater. Um, um, so, I should know this. Um, this is mostly just some pictures, so I'm not following directly from this slideshow. Um, so the way that chemical pollution builds up in, in fish is that it actually binds to either the fat in the fish or the muscle in the fish. Um, when humans then consume these contaminated fish, the chemicals can accumulate in their bodies in the same way and pose serious health risks. And the population that is at the greatest risk when eating this contaminated fish is really women, especially women under the age of 50, who are uh, women who are pregnant, women who are breastfeeding, children actually are at the greatest risk, um, and women who may have a baby in the future. Um, so the burden of these health risks are really on women. Um, so, the health, the health risks then for those who subsist on locally caught fish are exacerbated. However, a lot of people really don't have any choice uh, on you know, whether or not they, they eat this fish. Um, so the, the general uh, perception among high-risk urban population who utilize local waterways for subsistence purposes is that fish, regardless of the amount of pollution that, that is in these fish, uh, are the most ab abundant, cost-effective, and nutritious source of lean protein available to them. Um, subsistence anglers and the secondary and tertiary consumers with whom they share their fish face the dilemma of whether to eat locally caught fish despite this potential of heavy con contamination or forego the consumption of this fish, um, which would also mean foregoing the health benefits because um, fish is very healthy, right? Um, for some, however, the choice really is non-existent. Um, if, they, if they avoid eating this locally caught fish, then they are foregoing a meal altogether. Um, so um, this, if you see some of the graphics that are in here, we have done a lot of public health information and we created a lot of kind of simplified graphics <coughs> to explain 
how uh, chemicals build up in how chemicals in our waterway build up in our fish and then can get into our bodies. Um, I know I have some information in the back that I can share with you also. Um, so. Okay. Um, actually, before I get on to this part, um, so before I talk about kind of what we're doing, um, talk about how this is being kind of addressed more broadly. Um, so the New York Department of Environmental Conservation and the New York State uh, Department of Health, they work collaboratively to try and essentially minimize exposure to contaminants in fish. And the way that they do that is they produce a fish consumption advisory. Um, so pretty much every, every waterway in New York State that's a fresh waterway has an advisory on it. Um, the most fish they ever tell you to eat is four meals a month from a particular waterway. However, if a, if a waterway has a specific advisory, which means they found that waterway to be more contaminated, then four fish would be, for certain populations, they may say you can eat uh, four fish meals a month, and that's generally for men. Or for women, they often say, don't eat any fish at all out of this waterway. Um, so aside from basically telling you which fish to eat, which fish not to eat, um, these advisories provide information about the risks of eating locally caught fish um, and risk reduction strategies to help consumers make their fish meals safer. Nevertheless, advisories and risk communications are historically ineffective at changing behavior and reducing public exposure to contaminants, uh, especially for those people who are most at risk. Um, and this is in part, if, if, you, if any of you took the, uh, the large document from the Department of Health, um, they're, they can be very hard to read. Uh, there's a lot of information in there. And if you're a woman, then pretty much what that information is telling you is don't eat any fish ever out of any of these waterways. So there's not a whole lot of choice about you know, what you can do. Um, and really the, the long-term solution here is to clean up our waterways because people are gonna continue to fish, people are gonna continue to eat this fish, um, but we really have to think about what do we do kind of in the short term to address this issue. Um, and when we're thinking about that, we have to think about how to tackle the cumulative, cumulative factors um, that undermine the efficacy of public risk communication. Um, so those things are people's cultural traditions, uh, food security issues, socioeconomic status, literacy, education, uh, de decision-making power of an individual or of a community uh, when we actually try and address these issues. Um, so before, again, before I get into this, I'm just gonna very briefly mention. So the way that this, you know, specifically um, concerns women is that they are considered that the high-risk population. Um, and this is because of women's ability to pass on contaminants to babies and children. Um, so women, as Diana mentioned, uh, you when you're pregnant, anything that's in your body, essentially, you can pass some of that contamination onto your baby. When you're breastfeeding, you can also pass some of that contamination on uh, to your baby. And if you have a baby in the future, um, then contaminants that are already in your body can eventually be passed on. Um, so they generally tell women to be very, very, very careful when they're eating this fish to protect the health of their baby. But what that does is it, it puts this huge burden on women to kind of make that choice of, of, of what they're gonna eat. Um, and the other problem with what we've kind of discovered is that often women don't have access to the information uh, you know, about these risks. You know, they, they will sometimes give information to people who actually go down to the water and fish. They may have information about, okay, don't eat this fish or do eat this fish. But if that person who's fishing is a man, that, that information may not actually filter down to the women in his household or to women in his community. Um, so that's one of the things we're really trying to address. Um, so what we're trying to do to address this, um, what we're not trying to do is we're not trying to get people to stop fishing. We're not trying to tell people, you know, you can't eat this fish because a lot of people really have no other option. Um, we're not trying to change people's sort of cultural behaviors or, you know, any of those things. Um, so we're trying to basically identify who, who utilizes the waterway. Um, who are these secondary consumers that are even more hidden than the populations of people who are going down and doing the fishing? Um, who's most at risk? Um, whether or not people actually know about advisories um, and whether or not they follow them. 
and kind of trying to assess, uh, assess, sorry, assess people's exposure risks based on this information. Um, we're also doing education and a lot of on the ground outreach. So going down to the water, talking to people actually fish, trying to get this information out to people, um, finding out who people share their fish with. So there's a lot of people who will fish and they may or may not eat the fish that they catch, but oftentimes if they catch something that they don't want, they'll pass it on to someone else. Um, people are often passing on fish that tend to be more contaminated and giving it to someone who's definitely gonna take that, that fish home and eat it. So finding out kind of what behaviors are going on out there um, and doing a lot of events as well where we give out information. Um, um, so this is one of our events to um, the Burmese community. We are partnered with Jericho Road Ministries um, they do post-settlement uh, refugee services, so we train community educators there um, to give presentations um, and to talk to people about the risks of eating contaminated fish. Um, so we are basically identifying um, methods that subsistence communities can use to decrease their exposure, and that's a lot of what our uh, risk reduction kind of communication is about. So telling people about the health effects, but then telling people really what you can do to make your fish meals healthier to eat. Um, we know that people are going to be eating this fish, so that's you know one of the things we really have to focus on is what can what can a consumer do who's going to eat this fish to make that fish healthier to eat. Um, and some of that has to do with uh, the way that you clean your fish, the way that you cook your fish, um, which waterway you choose to fish in, what kind of fish you're eating, um, things like that. So um, we are also doing um, multi multilingual outreach materials um, targeted to different communities and to different uh, sectors within those communities. Um, so because babies and children and women are most at risk, um, we are creating uh, materials that are specifically directed towards them in several different languages. And we found that there's kind of an absence of that information out there right now that when the Department of Health or the Department of Environmental Conservation makes materials, um, usually there's a very small blurb that tells women, you know, you need to be really careful, don't eat this fish at all, and then that's where it stops. And so we think that this is a very kind of vulnerable population uh, that doesn't often get access to this information. So we're really trying to target that population um, with our outreach. Um, so uh, one of the things that we did at the um, at the health event was kind of let people uh, show us like which fish they like to eat the most. And something that we found um, with a lot of the subsistence communities, and that's you know very socioeconomically, racially, um, ethnically diverse, is that people like to eat fish that tend to have a lot of contamination. So fatty fish, <laughs> carp, catfish, um, people like to eat. Predatory fish also, so things higher up on the food chain, um, trout, you know, trout, uh, bass, things like this, um, and these tend to be more contaminated. So how, if they're going to eat these fish, then how can they make those fish meals safer? Um, this is another one of our events we do. The, we help out with the Family Fishing Day at Broder Park, um, which is really geared towards kids um, and teaching them how to fish. Um, but they also serve a lot of fish at this event, so we try and you know educate people on which fish you might want to catch um, to serve at this event. And this year, um, they actually would uh, they asked the parents if the kids were allowed to eat the fish, so the kids couldn't come up and just say they wanted to eat the fish. They had to get permission to eat it because it's all locally caught fish. Um, it's another slide from or some slides from Family Fishing Day. Um, so. The other thing that we do is um, partnering and working with other um, community groups to really try and disseminate and distribute our information. So like I said, <coughs> Jericho Road Ministries, uh, we do training to the doulas there. Um, those are uh, like birthing counselors, um, caseworker training, community educators, um, and then you know, how do we get this information into clinics um, it, to the people who are then gonna be able to distribute it to other people. Um, so these are some examples of the public health materials. You might have noticed some of the brochures in the back. We're about to get those printed, um, so I don't have any to give you right now. This is actually what we made um, specifically targeted towards the 
towards women. Um, so we made this, this particular publication is in English, Spanish, French, Burmese, and Nepali. Um, and we are, like I said, getting that printed. Um, we also have a pocketbook um, that we're giving out that is in English and Burmese, and that helps people identify which fish they're catching and which uh, types of fish tend to be healthier, um, and just some general public health information as well. We created a, um, um, we have a doula training guide. Um, we have, this is our uh, book that some of you saw in the back. I do have more copies of that, um, but it's really directed at people who eat locally caught fish, so if you would like one, just let me know has more information about some of the questions that people were asking about um, water pollution, CSOs, um, the history of pollution in our area, things like that. Um, and it's our take on the Department of Health's information trying to make that more accessible um, to people who eat locally caught fish. And then, um, you know, thinking about using graphics as our way of communicating um, risk. So rather than, you know, most publications use a very, very small graphic to explain how you should clean your fish. Um, we, this is only part of it, but we have kind of a very detailed, um, very detailed pictures that explain very carefully kind of how to, how to clean your fish, um, how to choose fish that are, that tend to be healthier, um, information targeted to different types of people. Um, so just as far as very briefly to wrap up, um, kind of challenges and opportunities ahead. Like I said, I think the, the really the, the long-term solution here is getting the water cleaned up uh, because people are gonna continue to utilize these waterways and they really should be, should be able to do that. Um, I don't know if anybody mentioned yet, but I mean, water in this area really is our, our, our greatest resource. Um, the Great Lakes represent 20% of the Earth's fresh available surface water. Um, so we have all of this amazing water right in our backyard, and people should be able to utilize it for different purposes. So we need to put a lot of pressure on you know, the powers that be and to clean this water up and also take steps ourselves to do that. Um, as far as this project goes, um, really expanding the reach of our education and outreach efforts, um, advocating for water cleanup and empowering and building agency among these subsistence communities to kind of do the same, um, to make their voices heard. Um, thinking about food alternatives and food security, um, you really can't tell somebody to stop eating fish when this is what they rely on, put food on their table. Um, what do you do kind of in the meantime uh, to make sure that people do have, uh, to, do have food security? Um, and then I think just continuing to kind of celebrate the traditions um, people's cultural traditions and the utilization of our waterways so that we can have make sure that we keep them in the, in, in the forefront of, you know, of, of our minds and, and really make sure that we focus on getting them cleaned up um, so that they do become healthy again and we can utilize them for, you know, all different purposes including eating fish.